I'm Wade Cruz, a National Managing Partner of Advisory Services at Grant Thornton, and today we're continuing our growth series and talking about market studies. And with me, Chris Smith, Grant Thornton's Chief Strategy Officer, and Elliot Finley, Grant Thornton's lead for M&A Solutions. Let's talk about market studies a little bit. So we hear this term out there a lot. I, I've got a few questions, but let's just ground ourselves in what, what is a market study? It's really straightforward. It's just the analysis of future, current and future demand for a product or service. It tends to be broken down into sort of five categories. Um, you, you have the, the market sizing, opportunity sizing dimension. You have sort of competition and substitutes. You have the customer. Um, you have macro and micro trends that usually encompasses technological shifts, um, regulatory shifts, COVID shifts. Um, and then last but not least, you have sort of the product service. Um, pricing is in there, so product service pricing trends. So those are the five sort of pillars of a, of a market study. And we're doing deep analysis to figure out is this thing as lucrative, is it as big of an opportunity as we think it is? And you know, we see market studies show up in three primary motions. Um, really, it's two primary motions. You have buy side or sell side. On the buy side, um, we see strategics and private equity. And on the sell side, we see strategics and investment banks. And so maybe you work a lot in this space, Elliot. Maybe give a little bit more color commentary on what you're seeing with market studies in investment banking and private equity. Yeah, I think when uh, working on and supporting a sell side transaction, we're seeing a higher adoption rate of market studies uh, on the transactions. Uh, really trying to prove out the investment thesis that the investment bank is presenting in the forecasts. Uh, I think on the buy side, it's certainly sometimes uh, looking at things that are not being taken advantage of, things that there is opportunities out there post acquisition. Uh, and so there's a slightly different angle, although as Chris mentioned, uh, the, the, same, the same information is being analyzed, it's perhaps just being presented differently. But adoption is definitely up, and in the majority of sell side transactions that we're working on, uh, market studies are involved. So what's the profile of someone, uh, of a company that that could benefit from this size-wise, industry, um, it, where are they in the maturity curve? Are there some that need it, some that don't? I, it's almost like, I, in my opinion, I'll let like Chris weigh in, I, I don't think there's a disadvantage to doing it at any size. Sure, there's, there's certain limitations of certain, uh, you know, I would say, small companies, very small companies, but ultimately, as you're even looking and you think about growth, and ultimately, uh, in the M&A space, there is, there is often a growth component to either side of the transaction, whether buy side or sell side, and I think it really helps um, detail and um, you know, essentially build some structure around that growth through all the factors that Chris just mentioned. I mean, do you, do you see size being a component? Uh, I see complexity. Yeah. Um, so if size and complexity um, are directly proportional, then Yes, but I tend to think about the more complex a business is, the more niche a business is, um, the, the need um, for a market study goes up. Now that said, I think straightforward businesses also need them. Um, when, when you're on the buy side, you, you really are pushing, challenging the sell side analysis on is, is this true? You know, is it as valuable as they think it is? Are the trends going the direction that it's, the sim is saying it's going? And on the sell side, as Elliot noted, so often when we're doing market studies, we're identifying potential revenue streams that aren't being seen. Um, and so sometimes trying to take credit for that and paint the picture of what, what the value could be two years, three years, five years out um, is, is highly advantageous when you're trying to sort of price the deal. I think applicability is, is comparable to that of a quality of earnings. Right, and I think as, as, as small as a business or as something else, there's always relevancy to it and something that can be presented that will definitely add value to a transaction. And so, you know, certainly we've seen that combining uh, the financial diligence and the market study under the one umbrella has, has added a number of benefits, not only from, a, from an output 
uh, and, and teaming perspective, but also on, the, on, on our client side from just streamlining the deliverables and making sure that there is, you really want all the advisors on a deal to be thinking about the deal the same way. And so we've seen some real synergies with combining market studies and financial diligence. And those synergies, I mean, they just drive increased confidence. And that, that's what this is, is all about with our, our clients is increasing their confidence that they are buying the right asset at the right price point um, or they are getting um, the, the, the right value on the sell side.